I'm probably ahead of the learning curve because I already have multiple products, um, and you can tell me if this is something you're going to cover later with the funneling. Um, but I guess my question is, in and this may have a answered this may answer a question that I had several months ago about when to release each product in a single autoresponder series. Are the new products all becoming? Are all the, uh, we'll call them the $27 products. Are they all becoming an entry point for a sub-niche or something like that that will, in effect, lead on to uh, similar or, I don't know, the same coaching programs or whatever? I mean, um, so would they each get their own autoresponder uh, sequence? Uh, I, I guess that's my question. Or are these things becoming stacked where I'm releasing – them at let's call them 14 day intervals or whatever um, and I guess that is a funneling question so I'm, I'm not clear as to the strategic implementation of uh, of the products okay here's what I'll do I'm going to give you a way to strategically imp implement multiple products and this is the information I was going to give you've asked about it now twice Jeff so <laughs> I, I'm there let, let's just get into it instead of waiting on it Okay, you asked the question, let's get into this material. Okay, and I'm going to give you a theoretical underpinning, and and then we can go from there. We can go with, with very specific questions, because obviously people have different levels of numbers of products, et cetera, et cetera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the theoretical underpinning of it, and then I'm going to show you where that can go, and then I'll take questions on it. Okay, okay. so let's assume that you have three products. And let's initially assume that they're all equivalent products, so they're all the same price point, whether it's 27 or 97. They're, they're all possibly entry-level products. You know, obviously not on exactly the same topic, but they're on a related topic that someone could um, be potentially interested in. Okay. So what happens is when somebody comes onto your list, they are going to be initially – there's – there's two to three things that are going to occur the first 10 to 14 days that someone is on your list, okay? The first and I believe most critical thing that needs to happen on your list is that you've got to build credibility with those individuals that are coming onto your list. However, simultaneously with building credibility, they have needs and you've got to begin to meet those needs. And in most cases, the way to meet those needs is for them to purchase something that is able to meet all those needs. You're probably not going to be able to meet all their needs just through free content right off the bat. Okay, so what we're going to have in this model and again, I'm, I'm simply giving one model. There's many different ways, many different models that you can use to run your business, and we've gone over several of those models over the course of, of time. Okay? And this is, this is one more model. Okay? And this model would say that in the first 14 days, we're going to do two things. We're going to build credibility, so we're going to do some of the things that allow people to see our expert status. We're gonna, they're going to see that we're a published author online, and folks, that can be obviously as simple as writing a few articles and having them published. Obviously, if you have a published book, that's better. Okay, but, but for everybody can create a, 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 a set of have a set of websites out there that have your published content on them. So you can position yourself as an expert. You can become an expert author on several different websites out there. Give people the opportunity to be able to see that. Okay, and those can be niche websites. So the second thing that we're going to do during that, that 14 day period of time is we're going to put people through a product launch. Okay, and this is going to be a product launch that is designed around the product that is related to the topic that someone came in on. Okay, so for example, your niche, martial arts, which one of your sub-niches, Jeff? Uh, women's self-defense. Women's self-defense, okay, and so you, it, women's self-defense, you have a women's self-defense uh, squeeze page, and you write, you, perhaps you have traffic sources that drive people to women's self-defense articles, maybe if you're using pay-per-click, people are, you know, searching for women's self-defense, and they're clicking through to, uh, uh, well, and they're getting on your list through this keyword, or through this keyword idea or set of ideas of women's self-defense. So they get in there. We know that somebody comes through that funnel. They're interested in women's self-defense. And so we're going to put them through this 14-day credibility campaign that is also going to include in it a 14-day product launch. 
Okay, now the product launch may not be a full 14 days, so the first four days might be credibility. On the fifth day, we begin a 10-day uh, product launch that introduces people to this product that's coming along. Okay, now, there's, there's, there's maybe two critical differences between a product launch that you launch to your entire list Okay, and what we'll call a perpetual product launch, meaning that every time someone comes to the list, they are product launched this item. Okay, and th there's a few things that are critically different, and as soon as you change these critically different pieces, okay, then everything else about your product launch remains the same. The first critical piece that you're going to change is you're no longer going to call this your brand new product. Okay, that, that's one piece to change. That's it. One piece that you're going to change is it's no longer going to be your brand new product. It's going to be your product. Okay. The second thing that you're going to do is you're going to take scarcity out of your campaign if your scarcity is built around 100 copies or 20 copies or 20 people. You're going to take that out because it's no longer true. It's available as people come in. You know, I want you to wrap your mind around the idea that you can still build some scarcity here. Okay, you can always build in the idea that the price may go up in the future, which is true. At all times, you should be using a, a split tester on your website. And you should be split testing different prices. And if through the use of your split tester and you do a couple hundred sales, you find that the higher price converts better than a lower price or generates more revenue, then you are free to increase your price. You're always free to increase your price. And so if you're always free to increase your price, you're also always free to include the possibility that price might increase if you don't purchase it. Okay? There's a, in my opinion, there's a huge difference between saying there's 20 copies left and saying that the price could go up. 20 copies left is not true if it's a perpetual launch. However, the price can go up is true, especially if you're split testing and you're leaving, you know, you haven't set in stone that this price is the only price that you're ever going to have this particular product at. These are the two key differences that have to occur in the campaign. Everything else in the campaign can remain exactly the same, including the verbiage, in a few days I'm going to be releasing this to you. Okay, now, I just added the word to you only because I want you to see that when you're releasing this, to them, you're releasing it to them. It's on their autoresponder campaign. It's their, it's your autoresponder campaign to them. Unless there's other people that have come through the campaign on the very same day, and if there are, let's say there's 30 people that join your list every day in women's self-defense, then 30 other people are being sent this to right now to you. It's just like I could write an email right now, Jeff, to my Platinum Club that includes you, that says to you. And I would be saying that to you and to Beverly and to Elaine and to, to Jim and to Glenn. I, it would, I would be saying it to you. It's to you. Okay? There's nothing, there's nothing deceptive or shady here, is there, Jeff? No. Okay, it's to you. So I'm going to be releasing a product about women's self-defense over the course of the next few days. I, I want to... You know, I've just got a couple of questions for you, okay? What are your biggest challenges regarding women's self-defense? And you're going to put that in there if you want to continue answering questions over time through a perpetual launch, okay? If, or maybe you're outsourcing that or whatever and it's efficient for you to put in there. Obviously, if you have all these perpetual launches going on and people are getting those emails every single day and you don't want to take the 15, 20 minutes a day to answer them or you don't want to outsource it, then you'd leave that email out. But all of this to say, you can go through the entire normal set of pre-launch emails and you can tell them in three days, I'm, I'm going to be releasing them to you. And in my opinion, and we're really splitting hairs here, you could probably take the words to you off, okay? Because that should be implied. If I write an email to you and I give you instruction, I don't need to write to you on it if it's already got your name at the top, right? Right. Okay. And obviously, if you write the email and you go, ah, this, this doesn't feel right, you can always add the word to you. Okay, but in my opinion, if you think about the fact that that email is being written to that person, in addition to the other 29 people today, it's being written to that person. So if we simply take out the brand new product and we take out the fake scarcity of 20 copies, 
we take those two pieces out, we can have a perpetual product launch for every new person that comes into our list. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, now, the reason that we would do this and do a product launch rather than just send them the product is that we find that conversion rates are higher when we do a launch than if we just send them to the sales page. That's what we find generally across the board. Okay. Now, obviously, if you split test and you find that, hey, I can get a higher conversion rate on day one with the particular product without doing a launch, hey, you know what? Day one, day two, day three, push product A as much as you want, but then do a launch for product B starting on day five or whatever, okay? And you'll only be able to know if that works, exactly how it works for your niche by split testing it, okay? You, you have to start somewhere. Then what you're going to do is after the 14 days are over, after the 14 days are over, then this person becomes either a buyer of product A or, by default, they become a non-buyer of product A. Okay, now, if they are a buyer of product A, they should now be moved over to a buyer's list where they are – two things should happen. Number one, when they initially go into the buyer's list, they should be – uh, continued relationship built, okay? So when they receive that product, you might send an email on day three that says something along the lines of um, how are things going in studying the product you bought the other day? Okay, do you have any questions about it? Have you had a chance to open up uh, chapter three and do the exercise there? Do you have any problems with it? Let me know, okay? And, and this may happen for five to ten days, okay? And then at the end of five to ten days, you are going to select a product. Now, this is all going to be automated, so I'm talking about it from the perspective of we were starting from scratch. But this is all going to be automated, so after five to ten days, this buyer of product A, along with every other buyer of product A over the course of the years, they come in one at a time, okay, is going to now receive a product launch for a new product that has a higher price, Okay. And I, I differentiate it by price. It, it should, should be a, a deeper product. Okay, so now this would, be not, you know, instead of women's defense basic, this is women's defense intermediate or women's defense advanced or women's defense webinar, or, you know, whatever the case is. I'm, I'm defining it as higher price, but it's really something bigger. Okay? Now, if they go, if they're a non-buyer, okay, then instead of being transferred to a list, that's a buyer's list, then they will be transferred instead, transferred or stay on. I'll get to that in just a moment. Follow the logic here with me and not the technical aspect of sure. it. And I'll get into the technical aspect in a second. But the idea here is that after 14 days, if they have not been transferred to the, non -buyer, to the buyer's list because they're a buyer, they are by default a non-buyer, now what do we do with them? Well, what we do is we have another product launch. Okay, we have another 14-day product launch. Now, what we could do is separate this 14-day product launch by four days of no content, or, or, of, of nothing, no contact. Okay, we could shock them into wondering what's going on. Okay, I, I don't, I'm not a big proponent of that, but I want to put it out there as an idea because it can be effective. Okay, or we could have four days of content, okay, with no sales pitch. Or we could have four days of content that has a very subtle movement towards, if they're interested in this topic, you know, buy the product that they still haven't bought yet, okay? So there are a few different things you can do here. You could put – the idea here is that I'm sharing with you is that there's a rest period. Okay, now, after this rest period, you're going to begin a new 10- to 14-day product launch for a new – another product, okay? Now, there's two ways that you can do this next product launch – with this other new product. It's probably multiple ways, but I'm going to give you two. Okay? One is you're just going to literally play this 10- to 14-day product launch out in your campaign. Okay? And so what this would mean is you would have a campaign that consists of um, four days of credibility, then 10 days of a product launch, four days of rest, 10 days of product launch, four days of rest, 10 days of product launch. Now, when I say 10 days of rest, you could make it 15 days of rest. I mean, you could do a product launch a month if you wanted to. The concept here is, though, that the, all of the product launches are all going to be in one big, long campaign. Does that make sense? Yes. Or, so you're, I'm sorry, let me, um, the, the sure. four days of credibility, 
that's just like when they came in to begin with, but now it's about credibility about the new product? Or just reestablishing a little bit of credibility? No, no, I must not have stated that exactly correctly. When I said four days of credibility, I was referring back to the very first four days of credibility. Oh, I see. Almost I see. Before the very first product gotcha. launch. Gotcha. Okay. I was not in, 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 in indicating additional credibility. However, but in the rest again. period, you certainly can throw credibility in there. So we don't want to throw that out. So we've got two different ways or two primary ways that I'm sharing with you that you can you can promote this. One is the, all these product launches are just stacked in a really long one campaign. Or what you can do is after these four days of content, again, I'm giving you an arbitrary number. It can be five. It can be seven. It could be 14. But after these four days of content, okay, or four days of rest, mm -hmm. then what you can do is offer these individuals an incentive to download a free gift that's related to your new topic. Okay, now. The reason that we might do this is because we only want to launch this new product to people that are interested in this new topic. And if they're not interested in this new topic, they won't accept the free gift. And if they don't accept the free gift, then they won't get promoted the product. What that does is it allows your list to rest the portion of your list that isn't interested in anything this week they can get rest. Now, you can give them content during that period of time, or you could give them nothing, okay? What this does is it helps keep your unsubscribes lower, helps keep your open rate higher, and then in two weeks, you offer them the opportunity to get on another product launch list that would also start with another free gift. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I missed the first part. Of the, I'm sorry, I'm taking copious notes here. Um, I missed the part about where this, this offer of the free gift falls. Okay, this falls on the on your list after the first product launch. Mm -hmm. Instead of queuing up another product launch on that list, uh, okay, okay, sure. then there will be an offer to download a free gift. So that's option the two. Free gift will be the entry point into another product launch. Mm -hmm. The this free gift will be the first piece of another autoresponder list sure. that looks very similar to the first list that people came on, except instead of promoting product A, it's going to promote product B. Does that make sense? Yes. And then if I if I decide to send out something to just as a as a as a content thing, here's a lesson. Um, I could actually include all these other lists because my uh, A Weber is going to filter out duplicates anyway, but I mean, I could send it out to everyone because it's just a general generic thing as an added content kind of idea, and it doesn't disturb my product launches. I get that. Okay, so there's a separate, there's a separate list here. Okay. And so what happens is over time, so you have 10 products. You have product A, you have product B, you have product C, you have product D, so you have 10 products. Mm -hmm. So you have your main list with, say, 10,000 people on it, and you send out this free gift offer, and 500 people opt into this free gift offer. Then for the next 10 days, those 500 people that have shown themselves to be responsive and interested in this new topic, those individuals will be product launched to. The other 9,500 will not, okay? In two weeks or any period of time, you could do it seven days later, those 9,500 people will be given a different opportunity to download a different topic of a free gift that would be associated with now product C, okay? And then on down the road for product D and product E, you'll have the different lists that people are going into to get a product launch so that the product launch is only going out to interested individuals. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, I have one question. <laughs> sure. Go ahead. Uh, well, I know that this is possible. Is this a good idea from your perspective? The initial list that the person ends up on coming in for that, say, women's self-defense or whatever, that could remain a general list, yes, where, where I continue to put out content um, and then just wire these free gifts in at certain points to move them over to possibly be on, to be offered product B, product C, that kind of thing, right? I mean, it, it would be a generic list. Or would you suggest having these product lists 
um, and then use AWeber automation to put everyone who comes in, regardless of the list, onto a generic, say, self-defense list where I'm putting out generic information, and it's not it's not uh, inclusive of just women's self-defense or men's or children's or whatever. It's just general self-defense ideas. I believe, obviously you can do it any way that you want. Sure. I believe that the most efficient way to do this, the most efficient way mm -hmm. would be to have one general list mm -hmm. that no one actually opts into. Oh, okay? Yeah, they sure. are automatically added. So if, if we can create a diagram with three products, so we have product A, we have product B, we have product C, and each one of these has a 14-day campaign associated with it. 14 days, 14 days, and 14 days. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, when someone joins product A list, when someone joins product A list, they are simultaneously added to general list. Okay? Mm -hmm. However, the general list does not send them out any information for 14 days. Right. Okay, so that when they're on both lists simultaneously, they will only be receiving e emails from product A. Now, at the end of 14 days, one of two things has happened. They've either purchased product A, and they are now shuttled over to product A buyer list, or they are not. If they are not, then they, by default, they're already on your general list, on day 15, they will begin to receive emails from your general list, and they will never again receive an email from your product A list, hmm. even though they're on it. Does that make sense? Well, that, that makes it even easier to create the autoresponders because I only have to create 10 to 14 days worth of emails for each of these individual products that bring them in. Absolutely. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Absolutely. Yep. Now, you can go in once a month if you wanted and delete anyone that is in product A list that's been there for more than 14 days. So I'm not paying for them. <laughs> you're not paying for them because they're already on the general list. So the only place you're going to have dupes is for 14 days. So the only place you're paying for dupes is the first 14 days. Right. Okay. Now, obviously, you're not going to go in every day and take the 15th day off. But, I mean, you'll have a schedule once a month, the day before you get charged, whatever the case is. You go in and you get rid of everybody that's, that's duped. You take them off of your product A list. Okay, so then what happens is on this general list, you're constantly funneling people over to product B list, product C list, product D list, okay? Now, you can do two things here. You can make two product A lists, two product B lists, two product C lists, and two product D lists so that the first four to five days contain credibility, okay? And then the second product A or product B list would not have credibility, would have something else. Okay, or you can just make your credibility subtle enough that people can get it right. again, and it's okay. Then you only have to have one product A list, one product B list, one product C list. So let's say that you have three niches. You have women's self-defense. What's another n niche? Uh, the ninja martial arts. So ninja martial arts, right. and then what? one more? Uh, let's go with uh, uh, defensive combat handgun. Okay, so... Defense against handguns? No, defense, uh, no, actually using handguns for self-defense. Okay, so self-defense with handguns. Yes. Okay, so you've got these three. Okay, now, if someone comes in on women's self-defense, then they buy or they don't buy. If mm -hmm. they don't buy, then now they go onto your general list, and now they're, they're given the opportunity to download Ninja Martial Arts. And they say, there's a 10-page you know, free gift, and they take the 10-page free gift, and they say, Okay, great. So then they, 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 they go through your ninja martial arts, and maybe they buy it or they don't, whatever. Mm -hmm. Let's say that they don't, and then they, you know, 15 days later, they get an email promoting self-defense with handgun, and they say, ah, I'm not really interested in that. Then they just don't opt in. They won't get that product launch. Sure. But because you now, because of what we have is we have three entry campaigns, three product launch campaigns, so you have three niches. You get women's self-defense, and then you've got ninja martial arts. You can also promote the, any, any, any traffic that would go. You could send it to ninja martial arts instead of women's self-defense if it doesn't belong in women's self-defense. And you could have people coming in to product B initially, okay, mm -hmm. 
and then they would go into your your uh, your general campaign and be promoted the other things. Now, if you're if you're obviously going to be promoting this the double promoting on the front end, then you'll need to put some automation in on the back end so that people are not obviously promoted the same items again and again. Now, the right. easiest way to do this, the easiest way to do this is to have two autoresponder accounts, okay? okay? One autoresponder account is with a company like AWeber, okay, mm-hmm. which does not allow you in your follow-up campaigns to exclude individuals just based on something that they've done in the past, right. okay? So AWeber is excellent for everything I've just shared with you, with the exception of the last point, mm-hmm. and that is being able to allow somebody to not be a part, uh, not be opted into something that they already have, okay? And in that case, you could use Infusionsoft, okay? Well, because I actually Infusion... have another email service that works, so... That... Okay, so if you have another email service that works, then, then you can do that, and it excludes those individuals from receiving emails on a topic that they have already purchased in the follow-up campaign. Okay, and the only way to make this work is to have those two campaigns. If, if we're going to u- utilize AWeber, which I believe is your best choice for being able to do all the things that we need to do on the front end. Okay, now, because of this, there will be one manual component to this. Okay, and that means that when someone purchases on one of these, whether they purchase an opt-in to Infusionsoft or they purchase an opt-in or opt-out of whatever, a Weber, the systems, they, the systems are not married together, so there will be one manual step that you'll have to take, whether it's adding it to Infusion, whether it's taking it off of a Weber. Now, you obviously can do that once a day. Okay, If you have four sales a day, mm-hmm. it takes you four minutes a day. Mm-hmm. Or if you have 30 sales a day, then you simply hire somebody to do that for you. Okay. Right, and then you're not doing it. So it's not automated in your autoresponder system, but if you're spending more than five minutes a day on it, then you simply hire somebody else to do it for you, and then it is still automated to you. It's just that a person's doing it instead of, the, instead of some software. Does that make sense? Yes. It makes perfect sense. Okay. So then once they, once they purchase product B, A, whatever it is, there's obviously an upsell to that kind of product. I mean, I have I have other products that are higher price points or the deeper ones that you talked about or whatever. So um, therein lies the reason for having a second, uh, like a buyer A list. And now they became a buyer, so now they're going to be offered this next thing. We'll also have something, obviously, where they become a buyer or non-buyer of that thing, which would bump them up for prom- being promoted coaching or whatever it is that I have for the next tier as well. So it just duplicates itself, yes? Yes, absolutely. The same concept applies. It just gets deeper and deeper gotcha. the more products that you have. But the same automation, the same process, I mean, obviously I've simplified it by saying three products and one list. But, yeah, now now you move people from subscribers to buyers. Now you can have three sets of buyers that go into different uh, buyer campaigns based on what they've already purchased. My advice is to automate everything that you do along these lines with follow-ups. There's just, there's, it's just sure. no... You do not want to do this with broadcast. You want to totally automate the entire process right. uh, because you'll make more money in the long run and obviously be less headache. Automation is key with what we have, I've been discussing. Well, and with the general list, once somebody buys whatever, they come in for whatever, and at day 15 they get bumped over to the general list, or when they first come in they get automated over to the general list. At day 15 when they get that first thing, I can just spread out the content that I've been packing in to increase credibility and as part of sales and all that, I can just spread that out more to where once a week they get an article or a partial recording from a class or something like that where um, that general list is now has content for quite a distance, um, and that's going to cut down significantly on how much I'm going to have to do broadcast-wise anyway. And then I can highly personalize the follow-ups on the product, say for the women's self-defense ebook or whatever, um, like you suggested. Uh, that can actually be the lead-in uh, 
discussing did you like the product or whatever, and then lead into uh, other questions leading them toward the next the next product in the list or the next launch uh, for that. Uh, and, and that's how I'm seeing it anyway. So this this really simplifies the process over what I've been doing up to this point. I've been trying to figure out how to offer multiple products to people in a logical order as they come in, and all it is it appears that, that you've laid out is every 10 to 14 days I'm going to offer them free ebook, free MP3, whatever, on a specific topic that's related to what they've already done that just crosses them over to another product or moves them up to the next level depending on what tier they're on. So that, that, can that's I, my understanding can I make of this point. Uh, absolutely. Now, keep in mind, keep in mind, you can do the same thing that I just gave you with your your product list. So someone comes in as a as just a subscriber, a non-buying subscriber. They come in, they're opted into list A, which promotes product A, mm -hmm. and they're also simultaneously off, opted into your general non-buyers list. Okay, mm -hmm. they don't get any emails for 14 days. You can do the same thing on the product side. So if someone comes into product A as a buyer, mm -hmm. okay, or they, they become they come onto buyer list product A. Mm -hmm. You can also have a buyer general list, so that when they come into product A buyers list, they have a 14 day campaign that that is just for people that have bought product A. They're also opted into a buyer list for all buyers mm -hmm. that the Doesn't same talk thing, 14 days. product, yes, that starts on 14 days and goes for everybody. That way, you can customize the messages that people in product A get, people product B get, and right. products B get. So you everybody have, becomes the same if they're non-buyers at day 15. There, you'll have two lists. You'll have a right. non-buyer general campaign. Right. You're, you're absolutely right. Out of buyers, all buyers will become the same on that general buyer list. But you'll have two general lists, one for non-buyers and one for buyers, because you treat buyers differently than non-buyers. Sure. Would you, you might be more aggressive with non-buyers. Okay, on lower ticket items to get them to become buyers, right. you would not want to cheapen the value of your list by being more aggressive on low ticket items with buyers. Instead, you'd want to build a deeper relationship so that those buyers who are already beginning to trust you will purchase at a higher level. Yeah, this will, that definitely changes the quality of the content because I, I often repurpose articles that are out there um, on my list and some are of a deeper quality than others, so this would help to, to segment them. I can see that. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Sean, uh, can I ask just a quick question about that? Yes, go ahead. Just a quick one. Um, would you have, now I right now have a buyer list for every product, so mm -hmm. should I have like one list that's for they've bought anything, anybody who's bought anything? Mm. Because I could okay. automate that and do that. Is that what you're saying? Right. What I yes. What I have just given is the method of automating that. Pro well, not the method of automating. I've given you the method of automation. I didn't give it to you at the same time, but it'll all tie together. So the idea here is that they'll come into each of these. Indiv you'll have a buyer list for every product. However, you will also have a buyer list for all products. So they will get specialized information that refers to product A for the first 10 to 14 days. After the first 10 to 14 days, they will then begin to receive messages from the second buyer, generic buyer list that all of the buyers are on. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Thank You're you. You're welcome. That really helps to, to automate the air of personalizing things. Because you know where yeah. they're getting it. You know where in the cycle everybody's getting anything. Yes. You're in complete control on an individual basis. Whereas with broadcasts, you have complete control over who gets what, but you don't have any control over who gets what when. When, yeah. Meaning that the person that's been with you 100 days gets the same treatment as somebody that's been with you for one day. 
Whereas we know that somebody who's been with you for 100 days and not bought should be treated differently than somebody who's been with you for one day and not bought, should be treated differently than somebody who's been with you for five days and bought, should be treated differently than somebody who's been with you for 57 days and bought one product, bought five products, bought nine products. Mm. This is ironic because I was just talking to one of my coaching students on Tuesday about how the martial, where, where in line the martial arts teacher's responsibility is and where the student's responsibility is, but this, this, there's still a parallel. We, there's the what and how is up front, but the when is the critical piece of mastery. You know, it's easy to teach somebody what and how to do something, but when they get it or when it happens is often the critical piece that separates or that differentiates everything. Mm-hmm. Mm. And this allows you to be in total control of the when, of the when. on an individual person basis. Absolutely. Well, that's besides the model you just gave me, that that absolutely is the critical piece that will change everything because now I know when somebody's getting offered anything that I'm offering them. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm. Can I say something? Yes, of course. It just uh, Leonardo. Uh, yeah, how are they? Um, so you're talking about here this com- people coming in on list A, go automatically subscribing to your general list. This 14-day launch on list A, does that include the 10-day credibility campaign that we're talking about? And if so, should we extend that to 20 days, 25 days, or 10 days of solid credibility building and then a quick four or five-day launch? No, no, these are two different campaigns. The credibility campaign, the 10 10 to 14 day credibility campaign that I've given you is for the purpose of selling high ticket coaching to individuals Ah. who have not purchased a low ticket item. The, The campaigns that I have just described have been for the purpose of doing a traditional product funnel where people purchase a, a, a low entry product, a high mid ticket product, and graduate to the higher ticket. The purpose right. of the pure credibility campaign that I've given you in the past was yep. is for the purpose of priming people to make high ticket purchases without having made another purchase. Now, could you combine the two? Yes. I mean, I mean, obviously, I've given you, you know, in the model that I've given you today, I've thrown out some arbitrary numbers like four days and ten days and seven days and 14 days, you can edit. I mean, there's no number that's perfect. You can edit this so that it meets your needs. You could change what you could do, Leonardo, or anybody really on this call, could say what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to do a 10-day credibility campaign. Then I'm going to do a 10-day campaign that gets people to make a high-ticket purchase without having made another purchase. Okay, that would be on the you know make your initial campaign a 20-day campaign. Then after the 20 days, I'm then going to tack on a 10-day lower-ticket product campaign to this. That would stretch what I've been referring to all of this time as a 14-day initial campaign. This would stretch that into a 30-day campaign, and then instead of having people stop getting messages on product A or on list A after 14 days. Instead, they would stop after 30 days, and they would be your first message in your general campaign would be queued up for day 30 instead of day 15. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. If, okay, now, the, if the, I, one change, sorry. the one change that you'll need to make if you're following both of these models exactly as I'm recommending is that when you launch what I just gave Jeff was saying that you could have product A, product B, and product C. You could have these 14-day launch campaigns and that they could be exactly the same same campaign for existing subscribers versus new ones, okay, and that they both go into the same campaign. Obviously, if you're doing a 30-day campaign that has 10 days of credibility, 10 days of high-ticket coaching selling, and a 10-day product launch, then if you put someone in the general campaign, you give them the opportunity to join non-buyer list promoting product launch product B, it cannot be the same 30-day campaign as someone would get if they came in as an entry point on the first on product B 
non-buyer list for the 30-day launch, it would be a different campaign. So you'd need two sets of campaigns. You'd need a product A, non-buyer, not on your list list, and you'd need a product A, non-buyer, is on your list list. You'd need two separate <laughs> lists for each product. Does that make sense? Yes, that makes sense. Okay. Or if we was, or if we was using Infusionsoft, would that make that all a little bit easier? Uh, let, uh, I want to be real careful before I give a blanket yes here. Uh, yeah, so, and let's just go through each of these elements. If you were to use Infusionsoft for this, then you could... Here's the drawback to using Infusionsoft for this, for this step, okay? So if the purpose of using Infusionsoft, notice earlier I recommended Infusionsoft for back-end product sales, okay? However, if you were to use Infusionsoft with the exact scenario that you're describing and you want to, to use Infusionsoft for the purpose of only having to have one product A campaign, you would have a 30-day product A campaign and a 14-day product A campaign that are overlapped, and you're wanting to combine those into one list. Now, in Infusionsoft, the way that the emails are queued is X number of days after the first email. And what that means is that if you were to funnel both your buyers and your non-buyers into the same product A list, and simply tag your buyers or tag your, I, I just said buyers. What I meant was the difference between non-buyers in product A coming into product A versus non-buyers who have already been through your product A sequence. That's what I meant, okay? Then you've got two cam, you've got one campaign here and they're not going to begin to get the third, the, the 21st day email until day 21 if you're using Infusionsoft. Even though they're tagged to not receive day zero through 20, that's all fine and well, but they're going to have a 20-day delay. Whereas if you use AWeber or if you use Infusionsoft and create two lists that are identical except for the first 20 days, 10 days of credibility, 10 days of coaching that is taken out of the second campaign, then they would be able to begin receiving the day 21 material on day one. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, that's why you need two lists for this, even if you're using Infusionsoft. Yeah. Okay. So what we have to remember is that Infusionsoft has capabilities that AWeber doesn't have, okay? But AWeber has functionality that operates differently than Infusionsoft does. And so the ideal thing to do is both use Infusionsoft for what it does best and use AWeber for where the functionality is most efficient, okay, and then marry the two together. Can you use AWeber for all of this? Yes, but the weakness is... The weakness with using AWeber for all of this is you can't tag out people who have purchased a particular item in the follow-up side of things. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Well, yeah. Well, I'm finding some of my paying clients are getting some of my on like my offline paying clients are now got onto my online marketing list and they. They think these emails are personal for me, and they're going, oh, you give me this information, that information, and they're all confused. So Infusionsoft would stop those people getting those messages, wouldn't they? Yes, Infusionsoft can be helpful for that, as long as someone doesn't go in and subscribe under a different uh, email, and then you have the same problem all over again. You see, because you have multiple entry points, like I have, You'll never completely get away from the place where people are voluntarily adding themselves to lists where, frankly, they don't really belong, okay? As long as you've got multiple entry points, you're going to have that, and there will be a little bit of an overlap. And you'll continue to get that with Infusionsoft over time. You don't see it initially, but over time, as people change email addresses, 
and you, you, you'll run into the same problem in Infusionsoft on that issue as you do in a Weber. It'll be easier, but you will still have some of that problem. You'll never completely eradicate it. Just keep that in mind. Fine. Okay, folks, any other questions on this topic of I'm uh, not even sure what to call this here, but your, your back-end routing so that you can maximize the, the, the places where people are seeing which emails. Any questions on this before we move on to general questions? Any additional questions on what I've just covered? Okay, if there aren't any additional questions on this, let's, uh, let's move on.